Hey, Ms. Bell's here. Um, what I'm going to do right now is a data A video on uh, your 2022 final exam review. This is the part two one. Hopefully, uh, okay. um, this is the worksheet that you should be looking at. And I'm going to kind of go through all of these things. So, the first one says solve the following system by substitution. If you're going to solve by substitution, you want to be able to get the y variable or an x variable by itself. Easiest one to would be to work with is the one that has a coefficient of one. So I could rewrite this y equals negative four x plus thirteen. Um, then I can take this expression right here, and I can substitute it right in there for that y. And I'd have two x minus three times whatever that y was, negative four x plus thirteen, just like that. Two x plus twelve x minus 39 equals 3. Um, just continuing on the rest of that equation. 14x uh, from those two things equals 42. And then divide by 14, divide by 14, and x equals 3. So I have three comma something. Then I can easily take that three and plug it up here and substitute it in there. And negative four times three is negative 12 plus 13 is one. So three comma one is one of them, just like that. And then uh, over here, negative two x plus five y equals one and three x plus 10 y equals negative 16. This says solve by elimination. When you solve by elimination, you're gonna try and multiply one of the variables by something so that it becomes the exact opposite of the other one. So I'm going to go ahead right here and multiply the entire top equation by negative 2. That'll make the 5y become a negative 10y, and that'll be opposite of that 10y. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this one right below this line. Uh, negative 2x times negative 2x is positive 4x. Negative 2 times positive y is negative 10y. And negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Then I'm going to add these together, and I get 7x equals... Uh, Looks like in this case I got negative 18, and then I divide by 7, and I divide by 7, and I get x equals negative 18 sevenths. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that back up into one of those uh, equations to be able to find uh, its other part. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and solve for y the other way because that's a nasty fraction. Now, if you have your calculator, you can go ahead and just graph it or whatever else to be able to find that last point. Um, you've already shown me that you know how to do it by elimination this far. So I'm gonna do it this way just in case uh, you guys are like, oh, what happens if one of them doesn't go evenly into it? So I got 3x plus 10y equals negative 16. And then I do this here, move this a little bit further away. So then I've got, um, I'm going to go ahead and multiply the top equation by 3 and the bottom equation by 2. So on the top line, that would give me negative 6x plus 15y equals 3. And on the bottom one, it would give me 6x plus 20y equals negative 32. Then when I add them together, the negative 6x and the 6x goes poof. 20 and 15 is 35y equals, in this case, that gives me, what, negative 29 and y equals negative 29 30 fifths. And uh, so you can go ahead and do it either one of those two ways. Um, I believe on the test it's going to come out a little bit easier, a little bit simpler for you for the numbers. Here we go, solve the following system by Kramer's rule. So Kramer's rule uses something called the determinant, and if I label these A, B, C, and D, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take those from there. So it's a times d minus b times c. So 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. 2 times 2 is 4. So a times d minus b times c, negative 9 minus 4 is negative 13. And that's going to get me denominators of negative 13 on both the x and the y. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my answers right here Take my answers right there, and I'm going to plug them in place of the x's to solve for the numerator up here, and in place of the y's to solve for the numerator up here. 
So I'm going to go do it for the x's at this point. So the x1 is going to look like this. Uh, 12, negative 5, and then 2, negative 3. So I replace these ones with those answers. So negative uh, 12 times negative 3 is negative 36. Minus negative 10, that's plus 10, that's a negative 26. And negative 26 over negative 13 is positive 2. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the y one. So the y's look like this. So I'm going to take the regular axis, 3 and 2. I'm going to take the answers, 12 and negative 5. And 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Minus 2 times 12 is uh, 24. So negative 15 minus 24 is negative 39. Negative 39 divided by negative 13 is, of course, 3. Now, on any of these ones, you could also, because this is an entire calculator test, you could also just stick them in and do uh, the A inverse B or the R, R, E, F to double check after you've shown that you know how to do the work this way. Okay, when I go to do this one, solve the following system by matrices, um, I'm going to pull out my calculator here. Give me just a second. Okay, so here's my calculator, and when I do this one by matrices, I'm going to show it a couple different ways. Clear that out. Uh, I'm going to show you the one that we've done in class the most. So I'm going to go to second matrix over here to edit, and I'm going to make this a 3 by 3, and then I'm going to put in the coefficients. So 3, enter, 2, enter, negative 4, enter, 2, enter, negative 3, enter, 2, enter. 2, enter, negative 7, enter, and 4, enter. I'm going to double check. 3, 2, negative 4. 2, negative 3, 2. 2, negative 7, positive 4. Awesome. Then I'm going to go back to edit, and I'm going to do matrix B. Matrix B is going to be the solutions, 9, 2, and negative 4. So I got 9, 2, and negative 4. So then on my home screen, and I go second, quit to get to my home screen. I'm going to do the second matrix. I'm going to do matrix A. I'm going to hit the inverse key. That's that little negative 1 button. And then I'm going to do second matrix. I'm going to do matrix B. A inverse B. And I'm going to hit enter. And it shows me my solutions are 3, 2, and 1. So I go ahead and write in 3, comma, 2, comma, 1. And you could double check. Uh, I'll do the first one for you here. So 3 in for the x is 9. 2 in for the y is 4. 9 plus 4 is now 13. And then 1 in for the z, 13 minus 4 is 9. The check mark. So it worked for this one. And it'll work for the other two because uh, we typed it all in correctly. So good deal. So number four, solving the system uh, given a story problem format. Determine the cost of each item. So Ted went to the store and bought five Frisbees. So we're going to do 5F plus 2H plus 7T. And then Maisie went to the store and bought three Frisbees, 3 Frisbees plus six hats plus nine t-shirts. And then it says the cost of a t-shirt. T-shirt is one dollar more than two Frisbees. Two Frisbees plus one. If Ted put spent $141, so Ted's was a $141, and Macy spent $54 more, that's $195. And then we got this equation, so if I rewrite this, um, lining up my F's, my H's, my T's. This F was on the right side of the equal sign, so now i got to put it on the left side, and if I do that, i got to make it negative. Uh, then plus 1T equals 1. And then there's no hats discussed in that one. Okay? So now I'm going to show it to you another way on the calculator. And this is with the RREF. So second matrix, I'm going to go over here to edit. I'm going to do a 3 by four this time because it's uh, three rows by four columns and I'm going to put in all the coefficients again 5, 2, 7, 141, 3, 6, 9, 195 and negative 2, 0, 
one and one. And now if I go to my home screen, I can do something called an RREF. So I go to my math column, I go to RREF, which is B, and I'm going to do an RREF for matrix A. So that's what it looks like on your calculator. I'm going to hit enter, and you can see it'll show me an identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then the solutions for the frisbees, the hats, and the t-shirts, so 6, 10, and 13. So Frisbee is $6, a hat, uh, which was our second variable, is $10, and a t-shirt is $13. But you've just got to be able to show that you have this stuff in there correctly. Okay, so I'm going to do the next one, graph the following inequalities. I'm just going to give a little sketch right here. So this one's y is less than negative 3x plus 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. There's a point down 3 over 1. There's another point. So I'm going to make a dashed line here because um, it doesn't say it's equal to. It just says it's less than. T. So dashed line. Now uh, I need to shade it one way or another. So I'm going to check the origin. I'm going to check 0, 0. I'm going to plug it in. So if I plug 0 in here and 0 in here, I get 0 is less than 4. Is that true? Yep, 0 is less than 4, which means I have to shade everything this way. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the other equation. 2x plus 6y is greater than 12. That one I'm going to do with a t-table because I think it's easier that way. So I'm going to plug 0 in for x. So if I do that, that will cover up that x. And 6 times what equals 12? Again, I'm going to do the equals first just to find the line itself, and then I'll deal with which way I shade it. Uh, so 6 times 2, so I have 0, 2. Plug 0 in for y, and then 2 times y equals 12, that'd be 6. So 0, 2, and 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's that one. Draw my dash line, and then I go, okay, let's try 0, 0 again. Is 0 plus 0 greater than 12? No. So if it's no for this point, it's no for everything on this side of the line, so which means it has to go like this. And therefore, our solution, our solution in this case, is everything in this region right here. And that goes on to infinity, going in that direction. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. On the back side, we're dealing with some of these. Uh, uh, completing the square process problems. So on this first one, it says convert the following into standard form circle equation, state the center and the radius. You should use the completing the square method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do x squared plus 8x. I'm going to do y squared minus 6y. I'm going to do equals, and I'm going to do 24. So I move my constant to my other side, and I group my x's and my y's. I take half my linear term, put it in a little box over here, and I square anything in the little square box. So that's plus 16. So I do a plus 16 over here. Same thing with this one. Take a negative 3, put it in my little square box, square that, I get a plus 9. So I do a plus 9 over here. So then this factors into x plus whatever's in my box squared plus this y minus 3 quantity squared equals, and this is 49. And if that's the equation of my circle, then I know my center's at negative 4 comma positive 3 the opposite of that number and the opposite of this number. And then my radius is the square root of that, so my radius is 7. So it looks just like that. On the next one, x squared minus 10x, y squared minus 12y equals negative 80. That's a negative 5 that goes in my box. And I do plus 25, plus 25. This is a negative 6 that goes in my box. So that's plus 36 and plus 36. And you can see that I would have x minus 5 quantity squared plus y minus 6 quantity squared equals, and then over here, I get 50, 61. I get a negative 19. Ooh, ooh, negative 19. Not possible. Uh, I can't have a radius with a negative distance, so... No solution, no circle. Does not exist. D-N-E. 
That's another thing that you could write. D and E does not exist. Okay. So on these ones here, it says use a quadratic formula to find the solutions to these two quadratic equations. Um, and then I believe that on these ones, I gave you two of them that didn't work just because I wanted you to uh, process it out. So I'm going to go ahead and change on the um, change the second one, but I'll go ahead and do the first one. So I get negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2. A. That's what x equals. And if I had a negative underneath the radical, if my final answer is negative underneath the radical, then it's imaginary solutions. So I got negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 4 times negative 3 times negative 7. And 4 times 3 is 12 times 7 is... 90 something, so I have 25 minus 90 something, so basically I get a square root of a negative, and that means that there is no solution. So on this second one here, I'm going to go ahead and change one of these things. I'm going to change this plus 2 to a minus 2, and go ahead and solve it that way. So again, I changed it just so that you can see the work all the way through. So I got negative b, so that's 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 4 times 4 times negative 2, all over 8. Then I keep solving this one, and I get 3 plus or minus uh, 16 and 2 is 32, so 9 plus 32 is the square root of 41, all over 8. So then I take my handy-dandy calculator, and I'm going to actually do these ones. So 3 plus the square root of 41, uh, enter, divided by 8, enter. I get 1.17. I'll go ahead and make it 1.175. And then we do 3 minus the square root of 41, enter, divided by 8, enter. I get negative 0.425, negative Four, two, five, and then I'm going to go ahead and do this quick on here, and I'm going to hit y equals 4x, oops, excuse me, 4x squared uh, minus 3x minus 2, and zoom 6 it. So I'm just going to graph it so you can see that my two solutions, I have one that's about negative a half and one that's about 1.1 1 .1 something. I go to y equals 0, and hit graph again. Now I'm going to do intersection. So second trace, number 5, enter, enter, enter. 0. 0.425, uh, 0. 0.425, and you can see that that one's negative, and so is the one of my thing. So second trace, number 5. Move my cursor over further, enter, 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 and 1.175, 1.175. So I just showed you how it works uh, with the with using quadratic formula and with graphing. Just another way that you can check. So over here, uh, what does 5 plus 3i times negative 2 plus 4i equal? So 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Uh, inside is negative 6i. Outside is 20i. Uh, so that's 14i when I put those together. And then 3i times 4i is plus 12i squared, and i squared is negative 1, so that's negative 12, so that's negative 22 plus 14i. Okay, negative 10 and negative 12 is negative 22 plus 14i. Reminder again that on your calculator you can go right here, and that right down here is your i button. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and it looks just like this. Uh, parentheses 5 plus 3 i close parentheses parentheses uh, negative 2 plus 4 i close parentheses just like that and I hit enter I get negative 22 plus 14 i and I'm like yay yay that's what works uh, you can do the same thing try it on your calculator here okay I'm going to go to this one 
It says a ball is shot out of a mini can at 164 feet per second from an original height of 8 feet. Please answer the following questions from the graph. Use the model h equals negative 16, t squared plus vt plus h of 0. So I'm going to go to my calculator, clear and clear. And I'm going to do negative 16x squared plus 164x, because that's my velocity, plus 8. I'm going to go to my window. And I'm going to go x max 0, or x min 0, x max. Um, 164 feet per second is kind of fast. Uh, so I'm going to go 15 seconds. I think it'll land before that, but I'm feeling like I want to just do that. And then maybe I'm going to go 500 feet. I'm going to go negative 50 feet. I hit graph, and I'm like, oh, what a good guess. So the two questions says, how high does the ball go? So that's right there. Second trace, number five intersection, or number five. Uh, oh, I did use intersection. Don't want to do that. Oop, just a second. That light's just fine. There we go. I do want to do a maximum. So second trace, number four, maximum. So I pick something on the left side of it by hitting enter. I move it across the right side, and I hit enter. And it says, do I want to guess? I really don't. So after 5.12 seconds, it's a height of 428.25 feet. So I write right here, 428.25 feet. And then it says, how long does it take to hit the ground? Well, it hits the ground right over here, right? You can see it coming down. It's right over here someplace. I'm going to go ahead and do y equals 0 for my other point. And then... Second trace, number five, moving it right down here, enter, enter, enter. Then you can see that it's 10.298 seconds. So I go ahead and put 10.298 seconds. Looks like some other people are coming in to get some work done, so you might hear another voice or two. I'm up at the school right now. It says the parabola has a vertex of 6, negative 3 and goes through the point 2, negative 8. What's an equation that models the parabola? Also, what's the value of y? When x is equal to 14. So I'm going to show this to you two different ways. Actually, probably just one. Go ahead and do this one. 6, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 6, negative 3. There's one point. And another point is 2, negative 8. So 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 8. And I'm going to say, if this has symmetry, what is the other point? So from x goes from 2 to 6, so the next point over here has to be at 10, because they're 4 away from each other, so these have to be 4 away from each other. Also has to be at a height of negative 8. So 2, negative 8, 6, negative 3, and 10, negative 8 all have to be on this graph. So I'm simply going to use my tech, because I have this on my calculator. Stat, edit, oops. And I'm going to go ahead and put in 2, negative 8, 6, negative 3, 10, negative 8. Those are the three points that I have from this. Okay. Now I'm going to do a quadratic regression. So I go stat, I go to calc, and I go to number 5, quadratic regression. I'm going to go ahead and store the equation because it does ask me to use or to find uh, a y value when x is 14. So vars, y vars, function y1, calculate. So my equation is y equals negative 0.3125x squared plus 3.75x minus 14.25. That's my equation. A, the b, and the c from the ax squared, the bx, and the c. This is my correlation coefficient is 1 because if r is 1, then r squared is also 1. Then uh, it says when x is 14. So I go to my table setup and I started at 14. And again, this only works if you copied the equation in. If you didn't copy the equation in, this won't work. Table setup 14 and then second graph to see my table. And it says that the y value should be negative 23. So y equals negative 23 when that happens. Okay. So we're moving pretty good on this. It says a radioactive element has a half-life of 12 days. Find the amount of a 200 gram sample after one week. Well, I'm going to go ahead and write the equation down. So it's uh, the uh, I don't know, amount equals 200. It's a half-life, so it's 0.5. Uh, and half-life is 12 days, so that's days over 12. And it says after one week. Well, that's seven days. 
so then I go to my home screen and just do the math here. 200 parentheses 0.5 parentheses raised to the 7 twelfths, and I get 133.5. 133.5. And then it says, what's the daily decay rate? Well, that's how much it goes down every day. Well, there's a couple different ways that I can do this, but it's really just 0.5 raised to the, how many days? Daily, so 1 twelfth. That's the percentage that it has that it's staying, right? 94.38% of it. So then I simply do 1 minus that answer, and it shows that it goes down 5.6% per day. And you can see that if I actually did uh, 0.5 to the 12 over 12 days, a full cycle, that there'd be half of it, because it makes sense. That would be 12 over 12, or 1. Next, down here, it says a sample with a normal distribution has a mean of 46 and a standard deviation of 6. There are 12,000 data points in the sample. What percent of the sample falls between 40 and 58? And how many samples are there within plus or minus two standard deviations? Well, I'm going to go ahead and do the little bell curve right here. And it says the standard deviation is 46, or 6 and at the mean of 46. So I got 46 here, and I go 1 out, and I go 1 out, and that's up 6 and down 6. And then I go 1 more, and that's 58. And I do 1 more here, and that's 34. And it says between 40 and 58. So 40 and 58, so from negative 1 to positive 2 standard deviations. Well, I remember that there's 34% here, 34% here, and 13.5% there, and I need to simply add those up. So I go 34 plus 34 plus 13.5, and I get 81.5%. 81.5%. And then it says how many, how many, how many samples are within plus or minus two standard deviations? Well, that's 95%. That's just a given from it, right? Uh, 68, 95, 99.7. So 95% plus or minus two standard deviations. 95% of 12,000. So I do 12,000 times 0.95. And I get 11,400. And that uh, would be your answers for that. So, hoping this was beneficial for you. This is the review from the second set of uh, stuff. Um, remember that the other one we did in class a couple different times. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.